Hello Nuggets. Okay, so I want to do a quick blog on um, on why I feel that the experience and the history and the past performance is so important in software development. So a lot of you can stop the video now. Okay. So for anyone that watches this that is basically in love with their computer and uses it for their work and likes investigating software and stuff, I want to talk a little bit about it because uh, there are a lot of options out there depending on what systems you use. And I have found that invariably, invariably is a very strong word, but most of the time, the company that's been making the same product for years and years and years is the one you should go with. So, for example, use Word, don't use Google Docs. <gasps> Amazing that you said that. Uh, use Adobe products, don't use the latest. Uh, GIMP's been around a while, whatever. So. Um, use. I was going to say use Maya, not Blender, but the new Blender is amazing because Blender's been around a long time now, so that that doesn't fall into it. But the point is, so when Google Docs first came out, yes, I remember it. Okay, I thought it was amazing. I was like, this is fantastic, right? It's online. I just have to log on to any website, log my credentials in, and it's right there. Or everything I've written is right there, and it does everything Word does, and it's just amazing. And same with Google Sheets. And uh, they have a slideshow thing and whatever else they have. This whole Google suite is fantastic. It's going to change the face of, 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 of how we do our word processing, of how we you know, create documents. And it has. It has changed it. Um, uh, and of course, Google's now got, started to go down this path where it's becoming the enemy a little bit. And they're dark and they're bloated and it's, it's ugly and it's horrible. Um, but the fact is, they're not anywhere near as good as Word. And I'm sure there's a lot of people who are out there who hate Word and hate Microsoft. Um, but Google Sheets is nowhere near as good as Excel. It's just not. Excel is a, a beautiful piece of software. It really is a truly beautiful piece of software. You know, and I don't think it gets applauded enough. It gets used all the time, but but I don't think anyone gushes about how amazing it is. And it's extraordinary what you can do in Excel. It's extraordinary how complex it is and yet how simple to pick up. You can learn to use Excel in half an hour and then spend the rest of your life learning how to use Excel. It's amazing, you know. Uh, when you when you add like um, Visual Basic or Action Script or I don't know what they call it now, but it's Visual Basic basically. Um, but when you add in macros and stuff like that, so you can change the flexibility and what it can do, you can basically create an office program that does exactly what you want it to do with the text that you enter. All of that can be done in Excel, right? I mean, it's a little hard in places like formatting the text is a little awkward and stuff like that, but it's an extraordinary piece of software. And of course, it can do calculations and formulas and all that. Google Sheets can't do even a tenth of the stuff that it can do. It can do the most basic stuff. It can do formulas and there's some things it can do, but it's a thoroughly inflexible piece of software, which is what amazes me about it because when I first started using Google, I thought, look at the flexibility of this, right? They're new and it's shiny and it's like, they, we don't care about that Microsoft is the big boy in the room. We're going to do our own thing and it's exciting and, and get involved, right? But actually it's turned out that Google Docs and Google Sheets is a very, very structured, thin, there's, there's this ribbon of stuff that you can do. You want to take one step off of that path, you can't do it. And there's no way to get around it because you don't control how the software works. It is, it is closed, right? It's a closed loop. You have to send it to Google and say, will you work on this? And if you search, if you know a bit about Google Docs and, and Word and Excel, You'll find this when you search for stuff. You'll find a problem in Sheets. It happens more often in Google Sheets for me because I, I want to use that uh, a little bit more organically. Google Docs, you write in, you save it, you're done for the most part. Um, with Google Sheets, you're trying to do a little bit more complex stuff, right? So you can find a problem with it and you put a search on and you'll get one answer to it, which is you can't do that. And it was from five years ago. That's it. That's the end of your search because Google either change it or they don't. You know, you can check their add-in store and all that kind of stuff, but all of that stuff is so limited and it's all crap. I have yet to find something I can't do in Excel. It might be difficult to do. You know, I, for this Swedish game that I'm writing, 
I was using Google Sheets and Google Docs. That's how we share stuff. And it was frustrating me because I'm like, I want to, you know, I'm trying to build this, the law of this world. And I have to reference data from tons of different places. How the hell do I do that in Google Sheets? You can't, but in Excel, you can. I can build forms, I can fill in the forms, I can search more efficiently within those forms. I can reference stuff from other sheets very easily. So I just built my own macro loaded workbook in Excel to do it and it took me about half a day to do it. And now Excel does exactly what I want. I have this perfect piece of software that I could take to my next job and use, right? I can't do that with Google Sheets, it's not, it's not that efficient. And the reason that Excel is so good, or one of the reasons, apart from the fact that Google is going downhill, one of the reasons Excel is so good is how long they've been doing it. The people who make that have heard the same complaints over and over again for decades now. And it's just better and better and better. It's the same is true with games. You know, um, I look at the football manager games. I'm a, I'm a fan of the football manager games. And it's a work of art, that game. And the reason it's a work of art is they've been making it for 20 years. No one knows better than them how to do it. You can complain about stuff all you want, but the actual quality of the product comes from that experience. It's from those, those achievements. It's from their performance history, right? And the new thing on the block is fresh and shiny, but it doesn't have that depth, you know? If I want to write a pitch document that I'm going to take into an office and I'm going to show to someone and say, here, this is, the, buy this from me, right? I'm using Word. I'm not using Google Docs. And in fact, if I want to share it with someone, I probably still wouldn't use Google Docs, but that's more because of what Google has become, you know, and, and sharing our information. I don't trust they're not reading everything. I'm not, I don't trust they don't scrub through my data and pick up keywords. I'm sure there's a word cloud with everything I've ever put on Google Docs. Voice searches I've done from Google from 10 years ago are still on there. Five years ago are still on there. So they keep shit. I know they do. They keep everything. Um, so apart from that, I would take a Microsoft Word document in before I did any of that. Um, I don't know about Pages. I haven't used Mac for a while, but I, when I did use Pages, it wasn't nearly as good. You know, So your word processor should be Word. Your spreadsheet program should be Excel. And your art program should be Adobe. Now, Adobe is a massive company, and they some of the way they do things is really ugly, and they're expensive, very expensive, you know. Um, but they're beautiful, beautiful pieces of software. All of them, the integration between them, you know, and some of it's complex. They have like Adobe Bridge or Media Bridge, and I think that's gone now, and it's replaced by something else. And they're always trying to fix it and futz with it. But the primary use of it, if you open Photoshop and then open Illustrator and then open Premiere and then open whatever else you want to do from, the, from one of their Canvas programs, uh, you're in it right away. You, If you know one of them, you kind of know a lot about all of the other ones. And it's beautiful. You can do so much with Photoshop. You can do so much with Premiere Pro, you know. And one of the reasons that Premiere Pro is now like the go-to editing software in videos, it's not just that, um, what was the Apple one? Final Cut has gone downhill. It's that Premiere Pro has remained consistent. It's consistently good. And every iteration that comes out is better than the last. It's very rare that they take a step back. I, I mean, there's some stuff that's a little hard to get used to, it's particularly with Photoshop. Sometimes they change things a bit. But in general, it just gets better and better. It's a better and better program. It's more and more useful. The problem is the company is a little difficult to deal with sometimes, you know. But the actual use of their software is incomparable. There's nothing out like it. GIMP is good. I've used GIMP a few times, um, but it's nowhere near as, as strong as Photoshop. It just isn't, you know, and you have to learn to do it a particular way and you have to learn GIMP's little things and GIMP will change and then, you know, whatever the new one will come out. Um, maybe in 10 years time, it, we can have this conversation again. But that's why longevity in in software is so important. Because the iterations, you're talking about thousands and thousands of iterations, and it just improves. It gets better and better and better. The team gets better and better and better, and people get more experience. The new people come in, and it doesn't take them as long to ramp up. The new person coming in has people around them who've been doing it for 10 years. They're better, much quickly, much more quickly. So the software just continues to improve, you know. Um, so a shout out to those things. Sometimes it feels like 
it's big brother. Sometimes it feels like don't support the big guy, support the little guy around the corner. But actually what you should be supporting as a creative person or as a person who needs to produce something is you should be supporting the software that has been tempered for you, that has been designed for use, um, not just to be shiny and not just to check check some piece of political boxes for you or, you know, or whatever your reasoning is behind getting it. I mean, I like supporting the little guy, but I also need to be able to write. I need to be able to write as well as I can, you know. Um, now, it's not always true that it gets better. A good example is Final Draft. Uh, although I haven't used Final Draft 11, so I don't know. I was I left it on Final Draft 9 five years ago, whatever it was. Um, that progressively got worse, Final Draft. Or at least didn't get better. <laughs> um, the, the, in general, I guess it got a little bit better, but it wasn't enough. So now I use Fade in Pro, which is getting better. They update all the time. The, the It's a small company, so the updates aren't massive. But it gets better and better every time I use it, you know. And, I'm, you know, there isn't really much option out there. If there was, then I would use it, you know. Scrivener's really good. A couple of problems with Scrivener on Windows. But um, Scrivener's very good. So I think what you want to look for is when you're trying to choose which software, if you go to one of those websites like Alternative 2, I think it's called, or Compare 2, or one of those kind of things, where you say, like, uh, what's an alternative to Word? Or what website, what uh, word processing software should I use? And it gives you a list of loads of them. You don't just want to look at the features. Because a lot of the features won't be listed in the stuff you want to use. One you want to look at is what's been around for a long time and has a recent update. Obviously, if something came out in 1998 and that was the last version they did, don't use that. But if something came out in 1998 and 99 and 2000, 2001, 2010, that's the software you should use. That's where you start every time, you know. Um, it's one of the reasons Unreal Engine is so good, you know. All of the smaller engines, like Unity's really good. It's been around a fairly good time. It's not as good as Unreal. I don't care what anyone says. It's not, you know. It might be more flexible in some areas, and it's getting a lot better because, you know, people are using it. But the Unreal has such a pedigree. That's the word I've been looking for, pedigree. has such incredible pedigree that it's just streamlined. I, I'm using it again for a new project, and... I got back into it after about 18 months of not using it or a year of not using it. And I'm just reminded how beautiful it is. It's a work of art, Unreal. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, and Unity's are, it's great. It's fantastic. Do what you want to do. It's a little bit clunky. People like it because it's raw, but it's no Unreal. Uh, <laughs> people get pissed off at me for that. Um, so, yeah, that was it. I just want to do about that. If you're trying to decide which piece of software to use, and there seem to be 100 different things to choose from, look at the pedigree. You know, the same is true of games, you know. Uh, people hate on the Madden games and the NBA games, but in general, those games get better and better and better every year. They just do. You know, they're iterating a lot, and they're making money. So don't complain when a, when a product comes out with a new version every year. Stop complaining about that. It's good. You don't have to buy it. They have off years, right? They'll have, most software will have years. Let's say you have a software that releases every year, right? And they want you to buy... I don't know, Chalkboard 2020, Chalkboard 2021. You're like, why am I buying it every year? I don't want to spend that. Just skip a year. Because the end result is, what's happening is, every year they're getting income from a new group of people and the product's getting better. And their pedigree is getting deeper and their accomplishment is increasing and their performance and their history is leading you to a very finished and complete piece of software. So that's how you choose which piece of software to use next. All right, Nuggets. I don't know how I'm going to title this because it was a lot of rambling bullshit. I'll call it rambling bullshit. Bye.